BMR sorghum and sorghum sedan have been overlooked in the northeast and central U.S. as a summer energy crop. Farmers are discovering they have a number of benefits that fit their farm, rotation, and efforts at reducing cost. With the help of the New York Farm Viability Institute, we researched the crop management for the Northeast and the impact of stage of harvest on the potential milk production. Successful livestock production is growing energy, protein, digestible fiber in sufficient amounts and low enough cost. It's not necessarily corn and alfalfa. There are a wide range of summer energy forages. BMR and regular sorghums, which are one cut, BMR and regular sorghum sedans, which are multi or one cut, BMR sedan grass, which is a multi or a one cut, and BMR and regular pearl millet forages. Further information on these varieties is available on YouTube under Selecting Sorghum for the North. Sorghum is more protective of your soil resource and the environment. A month after planting, there is still erodible bare soil between the corn rows. Drilled sorghum will have covered the soil, protecting it and outcompeting late emerging weeds. Drilled, even in these 15 inch rows, protects the soil, while in the foreground, a wider row had erosion. A final bonus is that in New York, we harvest the beginning of September. This gives time for the crop to regrow and provide a cover going into the winter, as good as the cover crop on the right. Sorghum seed is about $20 an acre, while corn will cost $120 to $140 an acre. Sorghum is a lower cost option. One year of sorghum wipes out corn rootworm, so they are not a problem for corn for the next year or two, saving on corn seed costs. It has a wider harvest window, from heading to the tip forming soft dough, which is over a couple of weeks. And then again, when it turns dry, sorghum produces twice as much yield on an inch of water than does corn. For an inch of water, corn produced eight tenths of a ton of silage. Sorghum will produce double that at 1.76 tons of silage. This is a New York example of the benefits of sorghum. The corn was shut down by dry weather. The sorghum kept growing. Research from the University of California backs this up and shows a benefit across a number of sorghum types. Corn produces one ton of silage per inch of water. BMR sorghum produces 1.7 tons. BMR sorghum sedan produced 1.49 tons. And BMR photoperiod sensitive sorghum sedan produced 2.26 tons. Non-BMR types produced even more than corn on that same inch of water. Our yields in New York conditions have been consistently equal or above corn silage on the same ground. Our optimum nitrogen yield in this nitrogen trials was well above the corn silage yields. It is crucial that you realize the sorghum energy forage is very different from corn silage. Corn silage has energy from plant fiber and a major portion of energy from the grain starch. Sorghum has nearly the same energy but the major portion is from digestible fibers and sugars in the plant cells. A smaller portion, depending on the type and variety chosen, is composed of starch in the grain. In a multi-cut sorghum sedan feeding trial at Minor Institute in New York, with a properly balanced ration, there was no significant difference in milk production of 3.5% fat-corrected milk between sorghum and corn silage diets. Their research found BMR had a greater body weight gain, and they ended up with a similar body condition score for that for corn silage. Efficiency, which is solids corrected milk over dry matter intake, was 28% greater for the BMR over the corn silage. Rumen pH was greatest at 45% BMR, second highest at 35% BMR, lowest at 35% and 45% corn silage. They concluded BMR is an effective alternative to corn silage at 35 and 45% of the diet. A feeding trial of BMR sorghum in the University of Georgia found it can support similar intake, milk yield, and composition as diets based on corn silage. Our own research, where we harvested each week from boot stage to soft dough at the middle of the head stage was compared to corn silage. Dr. Larry Chase at Cornell University 
ran the results through the Cornell Net Carbohydrate and Protein Systems model. This was the metabolizable energy from corn silage. This was the metabolizable energy from BMR sorghum from boot stage through dough stage. It was slightly lower than corn silage. Thus, we need to add a small amount of cornmeal to the ration. This was the metabolizable protein from corn silage. This was the metabolizable protein from sorghum silage from boot through dough stage. Thus, we could remove some soybean meal from the ration with the addition of sorghum. These results were very similar to the Minor Institute study. Sorghum can actually be a better fit and a much lower cost forage for animals on today's dairy. Heifers will get fat on BMR sorghum species. They do very well though on the regular sorghum species, which is a lower cost and higher yielding. BMR sorghum is good for dry cows if the field is not manured, as we have to watch the potassium levels. Milk cows do very well if the ration is properly formulated. Both the nutritionist and the farmer need to realize that sorghum is not corn silage. You need to completely rework the ration when you put sorghum in and take corn silage out. A major change we found in New York compared to Texas conditions is the end point of harvest. The southern recommendation is when the grain head is soft dough, consistency of cooked oatmeal, halfway down. In our trial, this was too late. We lost milk production, and a significant amount of seed passes through the cow and out the back undigested. We suggest harvesting when the tip of the seed just starts to go to soft dough. The difference can be easily seen in the picture. The early soft dough is the golden green head. When you see white tan heads, the lower head on the picture, you better get moving as they are soft dough halfway down. Our research found that there is little yield or milk gain from flowering through to early soft dough and no quality change until you hit soft dough. Because the seeds are so small, the processor will have little or no effect on cracking the seeds. When we waited, when the tip of the head was just starting to go to soft dough, until a week later, when they were approaching soft dough halfway down, even the brachytic dwarf had 30 to 40 percent lodging with that delay. Fortunately, the crone chopper that harvested was able to get under 95 percent without having to go one direction. The other reason not to wait in the northern region is that shorter days, lower light intensity, and colder temperatures all reduce the digestibility of the fiber. Thus, you are losing feed value as you wait. It did not matter if it was a brachytic seeded forage sorghum or a seedless male sterile forage sorghum or a headless photoperiod sorghum sedan. Even pearl millet suffered much less loss than the sorghum species, but still suffered loss. We target harvesting by the 5th or 10th of September to capture fiber digestibility. The other advantage is that this is the same dates for planting winter forage for optimum yield and nutrient uptake. Thus, the two crops complement each other. We thank New York Farm Viability for supporting this research project. Further information is available in the newsletter at my website and my YouTube presentations.